Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us here on another episode of Contemporary Islamic Law. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about a very important issue which almost every Muslim family deals with on a yearly basis. It is in regard with the beginning and the end of the holy month of Ramadan and how sometimes some disunity occurs on a day that families try to spend more time with each other. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you for being with us. My pleasure. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about moon sighting and its importance. And basically the answer to this question, why is there so much disagreement on this topic? Um, like you said, this is a topic that um, needs to be addressed. It's very important. There are several opinions uh, among scholars which then creates disunity amongst our community. Um, one that says, well, there's moonsighting.com, use it. I'll tell you the beginning and the end of the month of Ramadan, uh, before Ramadan starts, you know. Other scholars say, well, um, we can determine, we can give a possibility of, you know, if it's going to be Tuesday in, for example, North America um, and Europe, let's say, and it's going to be, uh, for example, on another day um, in the Middle East. We can, and other scholars will tell you, no, we, we cannot determine any of that until the time comes. Uh, let's talk about what they use from the Quran as evidence and the rawayat and talk about the opinion of the scholars. <clears throat> You see, Allah in the Qur'an speaks of uh, the concept of witnessing the month. What does this mean? فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمْ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْهُ Is it witnessing the, um, the crescent, the moon? Is it witnessing as in being present there? This is a discussion. فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمْ الشَّهْرَ some scholars say it means if you are not traveling. Shahida means you're at home. And this is something that um, is more understood once you have uh, a complete comprehension of the Arabic language and how shahida, uh, witnessing, is, is, uh, is, is used in the Arabic language. For example, they say shahida badr wa shahida khaybar. When they talk about um, uh, the... Um, the, the 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 presence of scholar the presence of the companions uh, of the prophet muhammad in certain battles uh, he's, they say shahida he witnessed, witnessed it. meaning he was there not that you know it happened he in his time it or, or he, he heard was about like it. Okay. other one says no shahida means you see it like giving shahada you know when you go to witness uh, in front of a judge you don't say well i heard somebody say this uh, I think this happened. No, you have to be a witness. You say, you know, the prophet says to a person, do you see the sun? He says, yeah, obviously I see it. He says, do you have any doubt that it exists? He says, no, I see it with my own eyes. He says, then it's either you give a witness of such um, um, a certainty Clarity, right? or you, you avoid it. You don't come and say, well, I saw the, the moon. In fact, they say a scholar, uh, a per, an elderly person came to a scholar and he said, I, I see the, 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 the crescent, I saw the crescent of the month of Ramadan. And the scholar said, okay. He says, well, then you're not going to announce it. He said, no. He said, tell me where you saw it. He said, well, I saw it there. And then he said, look this way. Do you still see it? He says, yes, I, I see it here too. And then he says, turn around. Do you still see it? And he said, yeah, I see it everywhere actually. He said, Habibi, this is your eyelashes. This is your... Uh, <laughs> so, um, covering your eyes. So basically, some people just end up uh, being a witness to, to certain things that they think they saw. So, it says, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمْ Whoever saw the crescent and is sure, then فَلْيَصُمُ That's one of the interpretations. Um, so, that's the ayah. And then the riwayat, 
let's talk about the hadiths. The hadiths uh, are understood, for example, by Sayyid al Khoi and, and most of his students in a certain way. And then Sayyid al Sistani has a different school and a different interpretation. Uh, but almost using the same hadiths. One of the hadiths is that um, some people had seen, uh, some people had started, let's say, the, the month of Ramadan on a Tuesday, okay? And then uh, because it was cloudy, they couldn't see the crescent on that day. And then uh, some people from another city came to them and they said to them that, look, no, we saw it on Sunday, so Ramadan started on Monday, not Tuesday. And they went to the Imam and the Imam said to them, yes, you make up that one day. So Sayyid al khoi says, then you can, you know, the crescent, if it's seen in another city, it applies to other cities. So it's, what he says is, if you share the night with any city around the world, and if they see it in one place, then it applies to the rest of the places that share the night together. Like a part of it? If they share uh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour of the night, then if they see the crescent, the, the, the new crescent, in any of those cities, it, it can apply to the rest the of rest, right. uh, those uh, places. Sayyidi Sistani says no. Even when using this hadith that, yes, the imam said, make it up, who could, have, who could it have possibly been? The people that went around from one city to another city were all locals. It could be one village to another village. It could be one city to another neighboring city. It's not that people were flying, for, for example, from South America to Medina the next day, arriving to Imam al-Sadiq and saying, well, no, we saw the crescent there. And, and, and the Imam then said, well, if you did see it, then he told make his companions, right? make up for it. This, Sayyid al-Sistani says it was impossible for that time for such movements to happen. So therefore, every Mashriq and Maghrib have their own uh, horizon. Sayyid al khoi and, and his school, they, say, they speak of the unity of horizons. Sayyid al-Sistani speaks of something called the independence of each horizon. Each time zone, basically, has their own horizon. They have to see the crescent, and then they begin Eid and the, the month of Ramadan. And according to Sayyid al khoi it's a different... Uh, scenario. Now, when it comes to moon sighting, when it comes to using technology, what about that? Right. Why is it that we use technology in almost everything in our life except, except this? this one? Um, like I said, some scholars have really um, solved this issue by saying we believe that the beginning and the end of the month of Ramadan being determined, or every any month being determined by the crescent, is not an end. It's a, it's a mean. It's a mean for me to know when Ramadan starts and ends. And if I can get to know that through another way, then that's fine. So then the moon is in the objective, Ramadan is. Ramadan is, the month is. And others say, no, the actual witnessing of the crescent is in itself an objective. Um, so that is also... Um, where the disagreement among scholars uh, happens. But I, I'll tell you this, for example, with uh, Sayyidi Sistani and the majority of scholars, they say we can use websites like moodsighting.com and, and scientific calculations to determine whether uh, a witnessing is accurate or not. For example, if there is 0% possibility for the crescent to be seen or very little possibility for the crescent to be seen and for example, um, LA and a person calls from LA and says, I saw it, then we determine that is an right? incorrect witnessing. Right. Um, but if there is, you know, a lot of possibility, 70% possibility of seeing it in, for example, Medina or Mecca or Karbala, and 10 people call and they say, we saw it, then it helps us determine the accuracy of their um, witnessing. Obviously, this is a very complex and prolonged discussion, but I think... And in it a nutshell, may, I think uh, it clarified a lot some. of things. Thank you so very much, Sayyidna. And thank you, brothers and sisters, for your time with us. Um, make sure to share with us any other questions you have regarding this topic or any other topic um, on contemporary Islamic laws. And we will discuss them on future episodes. Until then, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.